appreciate you maybe watching this video because you were intrigued by the title. What do I mean when I say explaining how video game narratives are different using a badger? Everybody, meet Timothy. Hi, Timothy. Oh wait, this is Far Cry Primal. Smarkaka, Timothy. Right? Yeah, who's a good badger? Oh, Timothy is not a good badger. Timothy is an asshole badger, but he's my friend. He's more accurately Takar's friend. Timothy is my rocket raccoon to Takar's Groot. I am Takar. Takar Winja. Yeah. And this is the reality. This is the truth of my Far Cry Primal story. Someone else has a different animal friend with a different relationship. And I know that um, there's uh, one person who named their rare black lion Furiosa. I enjoyed that. I thought that was clever. But uh, Timothy and I are going to go boar hunting right now. And that's why I've got my hunter vision on right now. And uh, this would be a plot point. The fact that Timothy and I enjoy, you know, we have a, we have a bonding moment over boar hunting. And in a game... This is considered gameplay and not part of the story. In an action movie, which is essentially, you know, there's a lot of crossover between action movie narratives and, and video game narratives. In an action movie narrative, what, Timothy? Uh, what? What do you want? Oh, we gotta go this way. Okay, what's this way? Um, there would be, you know, the opening of Thor is him slaughtering a bunch of frost giants. Get that board, Timothy. Eat bacon! In, in a game, these scenes don't count, according to critics, as far as narrative construction. And I think that's wrong. I think that's wrong-headed. It's not as enjoyable ex of an experience to the player if the scripted narrative stuff and the gameplay portions are at odds with each other. And so, when we talk about story in these games, we can't talk about, you know, is the story on its own a good story? We have to talk about whether the story includes narrative elements that support the gameplay. And I personally think stabbing a boar in the eye supports this gameplay. But um, this is a problem when we talk about the narratives of video games, whether a story is strong or weak. And I diverge from other video game reviewers regarding my opinion of the Far Cry Primal story. I see it as a story that fills its purpose and gets out of the way quickly, and I liked that element. Other critics said the story was weak. I do not believe the story is weak. I believe that the story is appropriate for this game. And that means it's not, it's not a story first game. It's not. And there's nothing wrong with not being a story first game. And I don't think it's fair that a game is penalized for deciding to make first person gameplay the, the thing they're going to focus on and create a very simple narrative experience that, you know, supports that gameplay. And would what, Timothy? Yes? It's a hunter vision, the asshole bite me in the arm. Um, it, it's a reductive analysis to say that gameplay and story are two separate entities. In a good game, they're not. And if you think of some of the, you know, most enjoyable action movies that have come out, the plots are pretty damn simple, aren't they? And we're, we're not going to downgrade an action movie because it's a simple plot. It's an action movie. Who cares, if the, who cares how simple the plot is? You know, games as well as films are allowed to not be a plot focused story. M one of my, you know, favorite books of all time is Alice in Wonderland, and that's a character study. It's not a plot driven story. And and I'm not don't worry, I'm not going to do any spoilers. Uh, you know, I'm going to try this a little differently this time. Have some food, bear. 
Oh, good. Good job, Timothy. Chase him away. Good badger. Every other animal in the game is, is afraid of the badger, which is pretty hilarious. We have to ask ourselves, is a game critic truly someone who loves games? If they don't count gameplay as part of the overall storytelling experience in a modern AAA video game. And I'll get in a lot of trouble if I answer that question definitively, but here's my thought. My thought is that you can't separate cleanly the story from gameplay in a well-made modern game. In some genres, it is easier than others to do that. In a linear action game, it is far simpler. Something like, for example, Uncharted or God of War. Those are very easy to separate the story from, from gameplay. But they interject story points into the gameplay so that's not all in cutscenes. Whereas, more open world games or games with more player choice, it's harder to determine what is a story point and what is a gameplay point. So, you know, you'll see, you'll, you'll come along and you'll see a series of corpses in an area. And that'll give you a story point. You know, you'll see a particular city design. And that'll give you another story point. There's clues all over this world to the peoples and what's important to them and, and the differences and similarities between the various tribes. What the game doesn't do is spoon feed you those messages. And I think that's partially a design point, partially uh, a setting issue. Because this is a game set in 10,000 BC. You have characters that are a, a very early form of human being. And so they don't understand things like modern medicine or, you know, generally modern scientific concepts. They don't understand. Oh, you're yelling at the bear again, Timothy? Get that bear. Uh, they don't understand some of the things that are happening to them. They don't know what certain natural phenomena are caused by. And so the game, I think, has done something really interesting where the world provides you with these explanatory points. It's not done through dialogue because you're in a situation where people are too primitive to know what, what's happening to them in, in ways that you, know, you or I would. If someone got a disease, for instance, nowadays, they'd, you know, um, sit down with their family and talk about it and explain it and there'd be all these lists of symptoms and treatments and big, you know, hallmark moment, teary-eyed, overwrought emo stuff, right? Cavemen don't do that. Cavemen are like, my arm's missing or, you know, my butt hurts and that's pretty much where we leave it. And God, this pig is hard to kill. And I think that a lot of, how do I put this? A lot of critics expected cavemen to act like modern humans. They're not going to. And we can't say that we want innovation in games and then criticize a game for essentially being too different. Not enough what we expect from a Far Cry game and yet at the same time not being innovative enough. That's just, yes. the minute you say that, it's talking at both, both sides of your head. And yes, it is simpler. Yes, there's no complicated, uh, you know, intellectual exercise here because they're primitive man. They don't have first world problems. There's no first world. And, this, this is a problem because, unfortunately, game criticism has, has shifted so much into making social issues primary that they don't seem to recognize 
quality interactive storytelling when it's not dealing with some sort of gripping first world problem social issue. And I like the fact that, you know, the fact that they're cavemen is relevant. The fact that there's no roads in this world, because roads haven't been invented yet, is relevant. You know, I like the fact that it's, it's not what we expect to see in, in maps set in, uh, in modern day. Because you know what? I don't want the exact same experience I got in Far Cry 4. I want a different experience. What the story of this game is, is establishing, it's the story of the establishment of the Winja tribe in the Oros Valley. That is the story. It actually isn't overcoming some big bad guy like Pagan Min. And the funny thing is, you know, once, a, once another numbered game comes out, everybody forgets the last numbered game. Can you remember the name of the primary villain in Far Cry 3? I can't, because all I remember is Vas, Vas Montenegro. But Vas is only in the first part of the game. I can't even remember any other plot point uh, after, you know, Vas exit stage right. And this is the thing we have to remember about Far Cry games. The plot is an excuse for the gameplay. And we've got that here again. The problem is there's... Okay, what do they do the body? Uh -oh. I don't want to know what they do to the body. But, uh... I, uh this is a fun quest because you just go and kill everybody. But, uh... You... What... What... Far Cry had in Far Cry 2, 3, and 4, and e even the first one to an extent, is a lot of geopolitical intrigue masking the fact that the story structure was exceptionally simple. In Far Cry Primal, you don't have those trappings. You don't have the the gloss, the razzle-dazzle, hiding the fact that it's basically a, a binary story. There, you have to sort of, you know, settle things with the Udam and settle things with the Azila. That is the plot. There is no warlord, you know, at the top of it all. There is no pagan min. Uh, there is no one world government or CIA or anything like that. What there is, is, you know, two other peoples that want to kill you, and you have to solve that problem. Uh, I think it's in the beginning of the game, so I can talk about this element, that the, the Udam are uh, catching and killing the Wenja to eat them. So the Udam practice cannibalism. And the uh, Azila, uh, are a, a technically advanced race, and they're using the Winja um, for other things. Uh, and that is tied into the personal stories of the, the two characters you meet first, Sila and Tenji. And that's, you know, that's basically the story. It's a story of helping your friends. It's not a story of becoming, you know, the all-powerful warlord in this area. It's a story of helping your friends. And is it simpler? Yeah. Are there any gut-wrenching moral choices? No, you're a freaking caveman. Your moral choices are how do I kill this bear? You know, do I let this animal suffer? You know, kill this dude. He's trying to kill me. Simple problems. There's no writing in this game. There's no notes to find. So how do you, how does a, a game dev team create story, create those little side plots? Well, it's through little tableaus through the game. And instead of saying the story is bad, I think we should be showing that. Let's see if I can find examples in this environment before I burn it down. Because that's, that's the goal here. We, we're, we, we burn it all down. Um, so. Let me get a club with some fire. There we go. So we have stacked logs. 
that tells you something. You don't see that outside of Azela camps. You don't see that in the Udom camps. They still live in caves. You have um, herbs drying. You don't see that in, in the Udom camps either. You have ropes. You've got some sort of structure here that's distinct with the Azela. And all this tells you what these guys were up to when you came in to burn it all. And that's where you're gonna get it. There's not gonna be any notes from commanders because guess what, they didn't freaking write. And we, in order to enjoy this game, you've gotta get out of your pretensions. The whole idea is to immerse. And the idea of immersion is you play the game as if you are these people. And I'm, you'll, you'll notice I'm not really good at burning things. But oh, that's something I'm supposed to, right. Um, and oh, there's a cave painting here too. But see, there's, there's stuff you can pick up from the environment if, if you're willing to actually pay attention and not blow through waiting for somebody to tell you what to think about your experience. And I think this is really a sad state of game criticism that so many people miss that. Oh, you killed my badger, you're gonna eat freaking bee bomb, asshole. And the funny thing is, when they teach writing, especially when they teach multimedia writing, one of the things they, they um, grind into you is show, don't tell. If you can show something in a visual medium, instead of explaining it to someone, that's considered better because it allows the other parts of your team your artists, your level designers, stuff like that, to do their jobs as well. You're not doing it in words. And if you don't need words to do it, then don't use words to do it. And that's why I think that comic book writing should be taught as part of writing courses, because it's a very, very different way of writing. But writers and a lot of game critics are either you know writers that review in their spare time or failed writers. They are, they are writers, you know, they are craftsmen of the written word. So they tend to put primacy on written material or dialogue. And you're not gonna get that here. Could you imagine an Udom diary? Me eat head, me take shit. Like that's what it would be. No good to eat head while taking shit. Like that would be Udom words of wisdom. Um, this is as close as you get to writing in this game, guys. See these three marks? That's it! So, how do we do normal Far Cry structure? Here. Why was the expectation what it was when that expectation was not practical based on the premise of this game? And that's what got me so m m pissed off more than usual about this, because I'm normally pretty zen about disagreeing with other other critics. This time, I don't think it's actually a disagreement. I don't think it's an actual preference. I actually think they've got it wrong. And I actually think they've got it unfairly wrong. And I've had people say that they're, you know, they're gonna pie the game because of my coverage. They weren't gonna do it before because they heard bad things about the story. There were some surprisingly touching moments, yes, Timothy, that I did not expect. Um, I, I think I kind of went in going, oh yeah, man, I'm going to be a caveman and I'm going to smash it and I'm going to whack dudes in the head and bash their brains out. It's going to be awesome. But there was a real life affirming quality in parts of the narrative here, um, that I didn't expect. I, I really enjoyed the last two big fights. But you choose which one you're gonna do first, which one you're gonna do second. The game doesn't tell you which one to do. And so by you know linear storytelling um, standards, the game just ends. But it doesn't. It's just ending the way you chose. I did Udom first, Azila second. I. I personally like that. I think that's the way it's supposed to be played, just because the, um, uh, well, no, they're both, they both put you through your paces in different ways. I like the way I did it. And that's the way video games are supposed to be, because of the 
moment, the resolution moment in the Azila fight, and I know I'm being super vague because I have to be. Get him, Timothy. Um, you know, the, the, the resolution to the Azila storyline and it, it's bound up in the fact that the, the Azila are the most driven uh, by their religion of all the people in the game. Um, that's relevant and I can, I can tell you that because that's not much of a spoiler. But the, the resolution to the plot arc is a set piece. It's a, a visual meme. That, that is continued. And I think some people get so focused on, on gameplay, beat all the enemies, that they don't stop and smell the roses and sort of look around and uh, enjoy the beauty of a game. And if you don't do that in this game, you're gonna miss sort of the point of the motivators of a, a very religious people. The, um, there's a theme and I hope this is vague enough to not spoil things. There's a theme, because it's primal, right? Primal urges. The names in Ubisoft games are always very, very important and chosen with care. And the stories are told through what is every tribe's prime motivation. What is their primal need driving them forward? And there's the beginning of the world, the beginning of mankind's story uh, is the end of the, the other types of hominids, the, the, the Neanderthal and, and you know some of the others. Uh, there's another one I didn't even know about that I learned about because I've been watching a whole bunch of documentaries because I like this game. And there, there's a certain theme to this game where the beginning of our story as human beings meant the end of others without a lot of talky 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 and so i hope that if you try far cry primal you'll um you'll see things in this way and you'll see the story and, and the way it's presented the way i see it and the way not not necessarily you get the same um messages from it because the cool thing is you can take whatever message you want from it right the game is not telling you how to interpret the action and the the closest thing i can compare it to and this is a bad comparison in a lot of ways but it's the only modern storytelling trope that even comes close so a storytelling tradition it's a collection of tropes but um is is crime noir crime noir heroes or protagonists anyway don't spend time talking about their feelings they don't um they don't do the the monologuing they don't do the i am a villain i am a hero moments in dialogue you uh deduce or induce their emotional states and their and their motivations through their actions and this is how you have to view this game as well. And you know, as a writer who's written in different me mediums and has had to do it on cue, you know, for a living, I really appreciate what the writing team did on this game because they don't have the the cheats that um, a lot of writers have that allow us to to convey information in in lazier ways. And I guess the last point I'll, I'll uh, say is that innovation in games can come in many forms. And one of those is the way stories are told. And we as game critics should not have to be spoon-fed innovation. We should be going into these games aware of you know, what the intent is so we can say to consumers, like, guys, this is the experiment that this game is. Because games are always experiments. They have to give you something new so you don't go back and play the old game. And 
You know, oh, no, 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 I need you, I need you, I need you. Oh, feathers. Um, the, the experiment here is, is telling a story and creating a game and, and everything from the weapons to the, uh, the storytelling is using the tools they had at the time. And that, like, as a writer, that is a tough challenge. Like, a pre-printing press, people, like, this isn't even medieval. They didn't even have scribes. This is oral tradition and paintings territory. That's a hell of a narrative challenge. And instead of rewarding that, they got shit on. That's not a failure of the game. That's a failure of the critical process that reviewed the game. And I'm probably gonna take a lot of crap for, for saying this and criticizing, you know, sort of the uh, game reviewers at large in this way. But, you know, we're critical of games. We have to be critical or at least thoughtful of our own process. And, and, and we owe it to the fans and the game developers to not screw up like this. All right, Timothy. Timothy, where'd you go? Oh, there you are. Go, dude. Go, go. Eat that Azila. 